Hey guys, hope you're having a beautiful day. So it's that time of the year again where we have to do our taxes, right? And it could be a stressful situation, but if you didn't have any income, it could be <laughs> a very simple one. But if you are into the crypto world, you probably made some good profits in this bull run, right? So what are the taxes for crypto? What taxes are you going to pay for your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Stellar Lumens, your Cardano, your XRP? Unless you're an XRP holder like myself, then it might be different. So TurboTax uh, took out a statement uh, giving tax tips for Bitcoin and virtual currencies. So even though it focuses mostly on Bitcoin, this is this is relevant for all the different uh, cryptos out there. Before I begin, guys, please, please hit that like and subscribe button. It's going to really, really help grow my channel. Now, one thing that they mentioned in this article, I think the main point that they mentioned here is that uh, cryptos are being treated like stocks, right? It says here. Uh, if Bitcoin is held as capital asset, you must treat them as property for tax purposes. Uh, like stocks, bonds, any gains or loss from the sales or exchange of the asset is taxed as a capital gain or loss, right? So if they're going to treat this like stocks and bonds, then what we have to do is look into what the tax brackets are for stocks and bonds, right? And... Uh, this article from Investopedia gives us a little more insight into that. Understanding long-term and short-term capital gains. So, to give you just a brief overview on this, short-term capital uh, or short-term will be if you hold a stock for a year for less than a year, basically. Now, long-term will, will be considered if you hold it for more than a year, and they are taxed differently. If you hold it for long for less time. So if you hold it, hold it short term, you will pay normally more taxes on it compared to holding it long term. And I'll give you an example of that right here. This is a tax rate for long term capital gains in 2020. So uh, if you're single, right? If you're single and you, you're making from 40,000 to 441,000, then your, uh, your tax is going to be 15% right of whatever gains you make in the stock market and this is remember this is long-term capital gains long term if you're a, a head of a household right and you're making 53,000 up to 53,000 um, then you're gonna pay zero taxes on that and same thing if you're single you're making uh, up to 40,000 so 40,000 or less basically you're gonna pay zero taxes on that. But what about short term, right? Because we know sometimes we like to buy crypto, hold it for like a week or two, maybe a month, and then sell it. Or maybe stocks as well, right? Short term, you're gonna see that it's way higher. Like for example, single, if you're making from 40,000 to 444,000, then you pay 15. But if you're single and you're, pay and you're getting from 40,000 to 85,000, you're going to pay 22% of uh, taxes on your stocks, right? If you're a head of household and you're making from 14000 to 53000 you're going to pay 12%. Compared to here, which was head of household, up to 53000 you pay 0%. So that's basically the difference between long-term capital gains and short-term capital gain taxes, right? So short-term, you pay a little more, you could say. Now, since uh, cryptos are being treated the same, uh, you could expect to pay the same. So, if you are uh, married jointly and you and your spouse are making from 80000 to 171000 and you report your crypto, then uh, if it's short term, you're going to expect to pay about 22%. Right? And you guys could check this out as well. Um, I'll put this link in the description so you guys can look at it. But if you heard, held your crypto long term and you're uh, married, you're filing jointly with your spouse, and you're making from 80000 to 496000 then you're going to pay 15%, right? 
So it's a little more if you pay if you have short term compared to long term. That is the taxes for cryptos. Now they do have if you have questions, you could go to the IRS website. They have a FQA page for crypto, frequently asked questions on virtual currency transactions. And uh, you know, they answer all your questions here. Would I recognize a gain or loss when I sell my virtual currency for real currency? Right. So if if I ha if you have Bitcoin, let's say, and you you sell it for US dollars, do you have to recognize that as a gain or a loss? Right. And this says here is yes, you do. When you sell virtual currency, you must recognize any capital gains or loss on the sale, subject to any limitation on the deductibility of capital losses. So what about uh, how do I determine if my gain or loss is a short term or long term? And I already went into this, right? If you hold it for less than a year, it's short term. If you hold your crypto for more than a year, then it's long term. And, and so on and so forth. So you, you could go through this as well. I'm going to uh, put the link in the description so you guys could check this out. And what about if you have Coinbase, right? If you use Coinbase like myself, uh, I only hold it long term. Most of my cryptos are in the Ledger Nano. I have a hardware wallet. But I do keep a couple of my crypto in the exchanges. Uh, I'm planning to actually have a a short term bag because right now I only have a long term XRP bag. I don't have a short term one, so I'm like I should make a short term XRP bag too. So I'm kind of building that on my Coinbase uh, account. So what Coinbase has is they have an option to report taxes. Right, you just have to go to your account here, go to taxes and report. Once you click on here, it's going to send you to this. You could read this if you want, but uh, it's going to have two things. Transaction history. You could generate reports on that. You click on it. Let's click all time. Uh, yeah, let's do a PDF. Generate report. So you guys can see what that looks like. All right. And this is also uh, complete. So we could download this one in the meantime, I guess. All right. Let's open it. This is what it looks like. Oh, this is why it, it looks horrible. You know, it looks kind of messy, but it, it helps you at least understand what you bought throughout the year. So I started investing in crypto in December 20, 2017, and this is from 2017 until 2021. You can see everything I bought and I sold and, and all of that stuff here. All that good stuff. And the PDF report will be the same, right? Now, if you're doing your taxes through TurboTax, apparently you could pick up one of these and just upload it, but it didn't work for me. It was having like a header issue. And I was reading online and said to go to CryptoTax software. So if you go to this CryptoTax thing here, it'll take you to uh, this website and it will import all your Coinbase data into here, right? And here you could go to taxes up here, tax center. And it also has the same info. You could pick the year. Let's say uh, I didn't really have a lot of sales in 2020. My 2018 taxes, we could leave it here. You could go down here where it says IRS forms. You could generate it. Or you could generate uh, CBS reports, transaction history, capital gains. Uh, let's generate this one. Let's see what this, this says. Oh, I'll get it via email. All right. Okay, but basically that that's how you do it guys. That's how you get your your stuff. Then I'm gonna send this one via email as well. So yeah, let, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Was this helpful? Did it give you a better idea of how much taxes you're gonna have to pay on your crypto? Um you know it's funny that, that they are asking for taxes. Um and the reason I say this is it's not because I don't want to pay them. I'll pay them, I don't care. It's because there's not clear regulations on crypto in the U.S. as of today yet. And because there's no clear regulation, it's like, I think it's, it's hilarious that they're charging you taxes on something they haven't really gave the necessary regulations on, right? But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content again, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, stay safe out there, guys. Peace.
You know, actually, I agree with you. Uh, I think there are too many. Uh, there are around 3,000 different digital assets that trade on a daily basis now. I think, you know, anytime there's a new market, there's a lot of people that run into that market and try to show that they can solve a problem, they can deliver a customer need. I have said publicly before that I think 99% of all crypto probably goes to zero. Uh, 